Welcome to X11 Garage and today we test drive the BMW S1000XR Lovely looking bike And here we go on the XR1000R The Harleys. Ooh, what's the road? Straight away it feels like a sports bike, although for the um, fat people among us, uh, it's quite a tight seat, squashed up to the tank. More uh, sports rider position. It's in dynamic mode, which is supposed to be the all-round easy-to-ride mode. Um, yeah, it is uncomfortable, especially around the tenders. I don't know if this seat is adjustable, but it's very, very small. <laughs> um, the BMW comes with lots of features on the screen. Lots of changeable things. I don't know why it's got a cup of tea on there. Outside temperature 19 degrees. Oh, no indication. Pretty windy today down in Cardiff. Again, I'm taking this bike from MMP's Cardiff. Really nice bunch of guys and ladies. There's a lady there as well. Um, can I take a bike out for a test ride today? Yes, yeah, straight away. There it is, gone out. And you see, it's a lovely red bike. Red on my colour. This is the wife's colour, she enjoys that. But it is a nice bike. Except for the seat. I have a big butt, unfortunately. And overweight and tall. The riding position is lovely though. The bars are just wide enough. They've got a really comfortable feel to them. You can sway the bike back and forth easily. And the leg position is nice. Gear change is easy as you'd expect for a BMW. It is very similar to the RR road bike, except I can't ride one of them because they're too small and too tight. But the brakes, somebody's adjusted the brake lever right the way out, so it's instant. As soon as you touch it, it stops. And they're very sharp. So it should be easy enough to adjust them back out a little bit to make it easier. I say very nimble bike, as you'd expect from an adventure type bike. You've got the height, uh, adjustable screen, bits and pieces, nice good mirrors. Even for me, I've got big arms that uh, stick out of it. 
and I can see past them easily. Nice clear dash, I do like the dash. You know, the revs and the speed, nice and bright. Gear change. Um, I'm going to gear change to my own bike, but I suppose it's nice to have. Or is it just another gimmick, like the outside air temperature? Yeah, I don't know, people demand more these days. They want more gadgets. Me personally, I do like a cheaper bike with a lot less technology on it. But that's the way things are going. Cars and bikes. Everything's electric. Maybe the other bike's electric. Ooh. Oh yeah, don't come to a sharp stop. Too close to the tank. Ooh. Yeah, that could become extremely painful. I did mention the salesman when uh, I got on the bike. The seat seemed extremely thin. And a little small. As you can see, you've got an array of buttons on the dash. On the dash. <laughs> On the gears, switch gear, everywhere. I'm not sure what that is for. Nothing happened when I turned it to. I know you can change the mode on the menu. Little button there. Oh, there's a mode thing on there, it's on that side. Not oh, that side. Heated grips. Something to do with the stretch suspension. Power on and off button at the bottom. And a little cupboard to put your phone in to charge. Brakes work well. I think I may have overcooked them a little bit. They stuck on for a second and now they put the handbrake, uh, handbrake, foot brake, to get them to come off. I say don't like a lot of weight at speed. And it was a little smell of brakes. I think I may have got them hot. It's a very revy engine. It feels like it needs to rev a lot to go. But the seat, oh. The seat is hard work. Throw it into bends easily if you're confident that it will go on the bend at speed.
New trivers are hard to find. I find strange on the BMW. Oh, And the brake comes on and stays on. That's weird. You get a little green light on the dash. It says H. Can't be handbrake. It's strange, it's hard to get into neutral, even when it's rolling. Hmm. Oh, the heat just come on again. And the bike don't move. You press the rear brake, you go it off, and you can move. It's like a handbrake. Is that the thing? Modern bikes have got handbrakes? Strange. But an electric handbrake like a car. Weird. Too strange to me. Too modern. I say you got some nice features like you do like the dashboard. Nice flat. Very clear, you can see it easily. You can see all the functions. Speedo rev counter. Gear change. Time is handy. But then he's got loads of other bits and pieces which are weird. Too many gadgets. Nice having an adventure bike on these roads. I got all the patchwork quilt road holes and bumps. Good it's like somebody was playing Tetris with the roads. Another bump. I know, let's lay some tarmac down and then cut loads of square holes in it to make it look cool. Yeah, okay. It wasn't big and it ain't clever. about Corvettes, especially in Wales, you don't see them very often, so it's like an exotic car, and they are quite expensive in Britain, so, to see one driving around, mind you this is Cardiff, the land of the rich people, so we're going to see any cool exotic cars, it's generally in Cardiff, Cardiff, you gotta be careful and care if they reach your head. Oh, it's got neutral that time, first time. The nice thing about Hamburg coming again, look. How does that work? The nice thing about a straight four cylinder bike is you don't get a lot of heat coming in front of your leg. Because with the V twins, the Harleys, and all the Catties, the rear cylinder is right by your leg. 
So it does tend to get wet warm when you stop the traffic lights and bits like that. So you don't get so much heat. So if the only way you can get that heat to go off is to push the rear brake. I think so, because no matter how much I pull the front brake, nothing happens. Oh, it's a strange feature. I suppose it's handy for uh, parking on hills and stuff like that. But it means you got to pick the bike up, put in gear, pick the bike up the other side and push the rear brake. Weird. you think they'd have a, a release button on the handlebars. But perhaps they have and I can't see it. Or perhaps there's a, a way of doing it. There's a horn, indicators, menu, lights, hazards. Hmm. Plenty of buttons to play with. Probably plenty of modes to play with as well. So, push the back brakes and off we go. Not something you could really do in a hurry. Jump up, kick it in gear, flick over. Perhaps that's why it's hard to put in the neutral. So you don't put it in the neutral and you just push your foot on the foot brake to make it go. That could be the theory behind it. But she does go. I've got relatively big hands. A lot of people would say very big hands. So if I've got to reach and struggle to reach the indicators, then there's something wrong. And I think it's this nearly piece. And I'm not like, not really sure what it's for. But it pushes the switch gear a little bit further away than you'd like it because generally the grip would be up against the switch gear I'll probably find out later what it's for and what purpose it has but at the minute I don't know I've tried turning it and twiddling it and nothing happens I don't want to break it it's not my bike Too many gadgets. Some are good. It's amazing this is the capital of the country. And uh, the roads are terrible. You think with all the money there is in Cardiff, they'd have roads like a mill pond. Oh, nice surfboards. They're on the arse surfboards, are they? They're those um, sailing board things. This is one of the only retro bikes that they kept the six-speed gearbox on. A lot of the other bikes, XJR, GSX, the Honda x -Lam, when they put the engine into the retro bike, like Porsche, they took one gear out so they only got a five speed, speed box. And I don't know why, whether it was to stop it having the top speed, slow it down a bit, because it's hard to hang on to a retro bike at speed. And they kept this one because it's got a fairing, a little nose cone. Help you hang on for grim death. Especially the speeds this thing does. Yeah, 
it is a bit different. But it does go pretty fast. I don't have much of a chance to I don't have much chance to drive it quite fast. With a nice new defender. in the urban environment it's quite nippy and manageable on the waterway they would be very good very fast I don't know Cardiff very well. So it's easy for me to take the wrong turn. I know where I want to go. I just don't know. I think got the... I think it's the next turn. Yeah. Look at that. T-shirt and shorts. Not a good idea. That's the one. This is where we want to be. Office to left. Just big enough to get the bike in. So here we are with the new XR 1000R. As you can see, nice red one. It's got a lovely look to it. Very nice sports bike. As you can see, adjustable screen. Little XR S1000 winglets on the front. I think you call them winglets. Um, upside down forks, BMW radio discs. They look really nice. They work really well. They are, well, too sharp in my opinion, but I'm used to older brakes. Older brakes. Has a lovely look to it, especially with the XR graphics. Looks very nice indeed. It's a setup nice bike. Hand guards are lovely. You've got the nice big tank. It's got a little cubby hole in the top. For your uh, phone, I think it is, or bits and pieces. My phone will fit in it. It's got hangers for the luggage. Very quiet with the standard can, as you'd expect. Center stand. Bits and pieces. Nice little tail tidy on the back from the standard. A nice big red shock absorber. Some sort of gear assist. I'm not sure what that is. Um, could be a quick changer. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't looked it up. But it is a lovely bike. As you'd expect with modern bikes. Keyless ignition. So you just press a button. All the dash lights up. XR looks very pretty. You've got all the modes, all the different riding modes. You've got different suspension setups. Oh, there's loads of stuff on there. Um, like I said, I don't know what this wheel is for, and all these different things. 
but it looks really pretty. We can just uh, shut it off. Walk away with the key. Nice master cylinder. It is very pretty, very comfortable bike. Hand guards will keep the wind and rain off you a little bit. They're wonderful. You see the cable clutch. It's nice and smooth. The only problem is the seat. It don't fit a fat person. If you're big like I am, you've got a bigger ass. Your tenders are squashed up against the tank. And it is very uncomfortable. Um, you'd have to take this off and have a normal one piece seat. Um, yeah, I found it uh, very uncomfortable after about five minutes. And after 10 minutes, unbearable. That's why this is a short test ride. And um, I'll be taking it back and explaining how nice it is, but not for me. Alright, just take it back. And they give it to me no fuel in it. Beggars.